Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so this week we are fast approaching Halloween and I wanted to do a rendition of one of my favorite paintings, which is Starry Night, but in a Halloween way. So this painting is gonna be super simple, gonna break it down every step of the way and it's great for artists of all ages and perfect for a Halloween paint party. The uh, brushes that I'm going to use are gonna be my three standard brushes for today's class. So I have my uh, large one inch wash brush. I have a medium sized pointed sable brush. And I have my small detail brush. Gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that I use and recommend, go ahead and check the description box below. The colors that I have to get started with the background stuff are just an ultramarine blue and black and white. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So this first step is easy as can be. All we're gonna do is take our big square brush and we're going to fill our entire canvas in with a gorgeous navy blue. So I'm gonna take my blue, add a little bit of black to it and a little bit of white. That's gonna give me a really nice navy. We don't wanna to go too dark here um, because we wanna have a nice contrast with our pumpkin silhouette and little town later. So I'm just gonna load that brush up with paint and just get it going. A little bit of water always helps the paint go nice and smooth. And we're just gonna go back and forth with these brush strokes, getting the paint to soak into the canvas texture. I'm using a boxed canvas today. Canvas boards work just fine as well. And any size canvas really works. Um, we're just doing it in this horizontal way today. It's a little bit of white there. And we're gonna just take that all the way down to the bottom. And if you have a little bit of variation in your color, that's totally fine. All right, there's no such thing as perfection. And we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch of different colors on top of this. This is really just the base color just to get us started today. And if you are working with a boxed canvas like I am, you can put this navy blue color onto the sides of the boxed canvas as well, and that'll make it look nice and finished when you're done. A lot of times I will just paint the face of the canvas and then come back and paint it black later. So that's an option too. All right, back and forth here, going all the way off the canvas, making sure it's all soaked into the texture there and nice and relatively smooth. Okay, and that looks good. And now this is gonna be really easy. We're just gonna let this layer dry and then we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and I got some fresh colors on my piece of palette paper here. So I have more of the ultramarine blue little bit of violet, black and white again, and then also a bit of cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. I'm gonna go ahead now and jump right back in with my medium sized brush. And the first thing that I'm going to do is take my white and I'm going to create a big circle over here for my moon. All right, just a white circle, simple as that. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with white as well. Just like so, that's just the first layer. So it's okay if you still see a little bit of blue underneath. Okay, very nice. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of my ultramarine blue and I'm going to mix up a light blue. And with this light blue, I'm going to do two big swirls. So I'm gonna start right about maybe a third of the way down here. And I'm going to do sort of like a wave, like so. Okay, so now we have our shapes and we're going to start now adding dashes 
all around the our shapes that we just created. So I have my moon here. So I'm going to do a couple dashes around that moon like so. And I'm gonna do probably about two layers, although it's not an exact science, of those dashes all the way around that shape. And then also down here around my curves. Now they kind of blend into each other like two back-to-back -back waves here. And sort of like two layers, but you also want to start overlapping into that blue line that you just created rather than like creating a bunch of lines all around it. You want to do both. So we're kind of trying to break up that shape a little bit. Okay, very nice. All right, now I'm going to do just a darker blue, but still with a little bit of white in it. I'm still just using my medium-sized brush here. I'm going to take that slightly darker blue a little bit further out. Eventually, you're going to kind of run out of space. And you want to move pretty quickly with this and not get too perfectionistic. Okay, that kind of flowy, swirly feel is totally what we're going for here. So don't get too hung up on making it look too perfect. <laughs> Do a little bit more, kind of coming down this direction. All right, that's looking good. Now I'm just going to take blue as it is and bring another layer of brush strokes further out and a little bit into the light blue as well. So it's going to give us that sort of almost gradated look which was what this painting really is so famous for. The way the colors sort of blend into each other, but with that, of course, impressionistic style. Gorgeous. Okay, and just bringing those brush strokes all the way, almost down to the bottom of the canvas, just like so. And long sweeping brush strokes right there, kind of filling in the remaining space. Like so. Always get a really interesting sort of mosaic effect. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple also and sneak in a pinch of white into it. And I'm going to add that purple as sort of like an accent color into the areas of the light blue and even a little bit into the darker blue as well. So kind of wherever you'd like. Just a little bit here and there, all around those shapes. How pretty is that? The purple is, I think, just gives it a little bit more of a Halloween feel. And if you get it blending with the blue, I think that looks especially nice. Okay, now I'm gonna take a darker blue, so blue with just a tiny pinch of black. That'll be my final like navy blue color, just along the outside edges and in those areas where the dark blue kind of hits the edge, just like so, and a little bit into the composition as well. Again, if you're getting some blending together, that looks especially nice. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It's like night is coming in here. Okay, very pretty. I like it. I think I'm gonna take just a little bit of almost like an off-white. I'm going to do just a few more brush strokes here in the center just to kind of find those gorgeous swirls again and just make it look even more sort of blended and just making sure those swirls stand out against the background 
I think I'll do a few brush strokes of white around my moon. Also, kind of give it that glowing effect. Okay, beautiful. Let's go ahead now and I just have rinsed that brush and I'm going to create my horizon line at the bottom here of my canvas. So I'm just gonna do a little hill, kind of in the foreground like so, and then a little hill in the background as well. So those would actually be like two different shapes, but today we're just gonna make them one since it's a silhouette. Okay, so this hill might come down like that, whereas we have this hill here in the foreground. It's good to sort of start to understand your composition, even as you lay just these base colors. Okay, now we have a place for our pumpkin to go, and we have the little area where our town is gonna be. Okay, great. I'm gonna grab my smallest brush now and just create a little bit of buildings with some gray. So again, I have my smallest brush. I'm just gonna do some quick little buildings just right there in the black. And this is gonna be sort of maybe like a church steeple coming up here. And then just real simple, just a few sort of like rectangles with triangles on top, just to give us the feel of a cute little town. And I just pulled a little bit of white right in there just to give it a little bit of a highlight as if the moon is shining down on these little buildings. Just teeny tiny little buildings poking out from all different areas down here, just building your own little town. And I just did a little back and forth brush strokes for the sort of ground leading up to that little town doesn't need to be much. And maybe just a few more little buildings or something like that in the background. And we're going to add some lights here on our town later. So no worries if it's just kind of lost right now in the composition. I wanted that just a little bit sort of more straight. Okay, and that looks good to me. I'm gonna grab my medium sized brush again and create the shape of my pumpkin. That's gonna be with black again. And on one side, I'm gonna kind of come off the edge. And then over here, I'm gonna have a bigger curved line like so. So we have our cute little foreground pumpkin here. And I'm gonna fill in those brush strokes, just like so. Going in the direction of that pumpkin, even with the black silhouette. Okay, every brush stroke matters, remember. I'm gonna do a little bit of gray over here as well. Just a few little brush strokes right there to make that look more like of the foreground here and sneaking a little bit of white in that ground as well. Just like so. And grab my small brush even and add a few just tiny little strokes of white. Just like so. So we see our beautiful moon shining down there like that. All right, I'm gonna grab my medium sized brush again. I'm gonna give that pumpkin just a second to dry. And with that medium brush, I'm gonna go back up into the sky with a light yellow. Okay, so yellow and white together. 
and we're gonna go just right over that white. That was our first layer there to make sure it was nice and opaque for our yellow so that it doesn't end up looking green, the yellow on top of the blue. Although that would maybe look pretty spooky and appropriate for our Halloween version here. Looks like I had a little bit of gray still on my brush. But I almost like it. <laughs> That's a happy accident. All right, that can just stay like that. It's totally okay with me. I'm gonna go back to my pumpkin for a second. And I realized I didn't add the little stem. So let's gonna add a, let's go ahead and add just a little stem on top of the pumpkin, like so, so cute. We gonna, we're gonna wanna let this black dry completely before we add the jack-o'-lantern face. So for now, I think I might take also a little bit of white and just sort of pull it through the wet black still, just creating a little bit of highlights in my pumpkin shape and same thing from the bottom coming up here just like so that's perfect okay very nice and we actually need to let this layer dry as well before we come back and add our final little details so let's go ahead and take another short break and we'll be right back i'll see everyone in a minute Okay, welcome back artists. I have a dry background here and then I just kept the same colors on my palette. Uh, just a few more final touches here. We are almost finished. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our smallest brush now. And I'm going to go into my moon and create that gorgeous crescent shape. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit of light orange, so orange mixed with yellow. Just a little bit there on that small, tiny detail brush. And then I'm just going to kind of go along the shape of the circle and then come back and sort of fatten it up in the center a little bit, just like so. A little bit of sort of see-through yellow in between is perfectly fine and good. Okay, that looks really cute. I like it. All right, now we're gonna go back into our pumpkin and our little town. And we're gonna use a light yellow. So yellow and white together. Still have a little bit of that from my moonshine earlier. And I'm going to go into my pumpkin face here and create two triangular eyes. So this is just a jack-o'-lantern, so it can really be however you like. You get to create your own jack-o'-lantern just like your car with a pumpkin. And I'm gonna do one of the sort of squiggly smiles here that goes sort of off the edge. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back and fill that in using kind of a fair amount there of paint just to make sure that I have good opacity there, good coverage. Okay, so cute. And I'm just gonna kind of thicken up the grin a little bit. Like so. And just making sure that I have, again, good coverage here. All right, creating that gorgeous jack-o'-lantern glow. All right. Little bit tricky to have it coming off the edge like that, but I think it adds a nice little sort of like photography type feel. Creating that composition with part of the subject matter off the screen there. Okay, very nice. 
And I actually do have just a tiny bit of like wet black under there. I'm just being very careful not to pull it through all of my yellow, but I want to make sure that it's all sort of that same color. All right. I can put little final touches on later too, which everyone always is welcome to do, of course. Just going through the steps. But if you ever need to add something, go ahead and do that. All right, with that light yellow, let's also go into our little town. And I'm gonna add a few little windows in those front buildings. And also a few little dots sort of in the background there, suggesting that there's a little town just like so. So cute. All right, maybe a little bit of sort of like highlight reflection there in the ground, even just a tiny, tiny little touch there does it. Okay, and then we're gonna take a little bit of orange into my pumpkin as well. And just add a few little streaks of that orange on either side there. So cute, just to have a little final touch there. Maybe coming up a little bit here from the ground, just so that we remember that that pumpkin is gorgeous in orange. Okay, and just a couple tiny little highlights to finish everything off. I'm just gonna do a quick highlight there on the little stem. And just a little bit of clean white on either side. All right, and that is all the instruction that I have for everyone today. So please let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. If you painted along today, I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club, where my students can share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or from their own studios and imaginations. We'd love to have you join us over there. Lots of links in the description box below for you to check out too. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time,